and welcome to the Cinema Gold Show. I am your host, Larry Lace. And on today's episode, we're diving into the latest box office numbers and giving our review of Netflix's The Great Man. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Poddex. You can check them out today at poddex.com. Use the promo code Larry21 for 10% off your order. We'd also like to remind you we have merch available. Click the link in the description and check out our store. So first up, the box office report. Movie goers say yep to Jordan Peele's nope at the weekend box office. Jordan Peele's nope opened in theaters this weekend and pretty easily won the top spot at the box office, solidifying Peele's status as the greatest horror director of all time. The movie, which is kind of about movies and who makes movies and who gets swallowed up by the machine when movies get made, made $44 million in its debut, doubling what Thor, Love and Thunder made at second place, despite playing in 600 or so fewer theaters. Thor has made $276 million after three weeks, which is a hair less than what Minions The Rise of Gru has made after four. Minions came in third this week with $17 million, followed by last week's most high-profile newcomer, where the crawdads sing, with $10 million. It's at $38 million now after two weeks. In fifth place is uh, something called Top Gun Maverick. It's made $635 million in its nine weeks and month charts. And it's the last one that made over $10 million this week. Rounding out the final five are Elvis, Paws of Fury, The Legend of Hank, The Black Phone, Jurassic World Dominion, and Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Of those, Dominion is the only one that has made real money, sitting at $365 million total after seven weeks, which makes it the fourth highest grossing film of the year. So if you don't like superhero movies, at least there will always be legacy sequels in theaters. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you surprised to see Thor starting to lose some traction? Are you surprised that Jurassic World still making money? Let us know in the comment section below. As always, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. And hit that bell notification button to be notified of future videos. And now on to our next topic. The Gray Man Review. There's a moment in The Gray Man, the new movie from Avengers Endgame directors Anthony and Joe Russo, in which hell is breaking loose outside of building in Prague. Truth be told, it's hard to keep track of all the globe trotting in this movie. The building is blowing up. There are heavily armed assassins and local security forces shooting each other to pieces in the square outside. And soon, a city tram is hurt, hurtling off its tracks and crashing through more vehicles while demolishing a whole city block. All I could think was, wouldn't this rise to the level of an international incident? Yet, for the film's main character, played stoically by Ryan Gosling and the person helping him played with as much verve as can be mustered by Anna de Armas, it's just an excuse to dust themselves off and head to the next set piece. That's how generic and hermetically sealed a movie The Gray Man is. With a reported cost of $200 million, it's the most expensive film produced by Netflix to date, and the film, ba loosely based on the first of a series of novels by author Mark Greeny, certainly looks like all the money is up there on the screen. This is a big, slick, professionally produced spectacle that rapidly flies by and has enough on-screen movement to keep pulling your eyes to the screen in that Netflix in the background kind of way. But the plot machinations and character development, courtesy of Joe Russo, and screenwriting duo Chris Marcus and Stephen McFeely, who did far better work on all four of the Russo Marvel movies, are about as stock as they come. And the movie can't shake the overall familiarity of its plot. Eventually, you realize that it's all style over substance, with little to say about its subject or characters. Gosling is the gray man of the title, a fellow named Court Gentry, who was sprung from prison where he was serving time for murdering his dad, until CIA handler Donald Fitzroy, played by Billy Bob Thornton, got him out and gave a job as a clandestine assassin due to his specialized skill set. 18 years later, and now going under the codename Sierra Six, 
Gentry sets out on a routine assignment, but flubs it due to a child being near the target. He then learns that his target was once Sierra 4, also an assassin for the CIA. Agency bigwig Denny Carmichael, I'm not going to attempt to say the actor's name, wants him dead because he knows too much about Carmichael's evil secret agenda. Now that Gentry has this knowledge and a MacGuffin that contains it, he becomes Carmichael's next target. The latter taps psychopathic mercenary for hire, Lloyd Hansen, to do whatever it takes and kill whoever he must to put Gentry down. Going on the run with only the liaison for his last mission, helping him, Gentry must expose Carmichael, outwit Hansen, and rescue the only people he cares about before it's too late. Rogue agents, double-crossing bosses, a gleefully lunatic killer reunited for only those special missions. It's all here, along with a steady stream of shootouts, explosions, brutal fist fights, and continuous chases designed to make you forget that the characters are thinner than wet tissue paper. And that the twists and turns of the plot add up to very little in the end. While Gosling's character is given a token motivation late in the movie to explain some of his actions, and the actor is physically impressive in the role, he also plays Gentry so cool that he's almost comatose at times. Gosling is watchable enough to make it work. <clears throat> and you're mindly rooting for him to win, but he feels like a blank slit, slate a lot of that time. And the one-liners, <laughs> the script is full of them, just sort of fall out of his mouth and hang in the air. Thornton adds his natural eccentricity to his role and gets to do a little more with his character. But almost everyone else suffers by comparison. De Armas and Jessica Henwick portray tough, no-nonsense agents, but they literally have no lives other than their roles as enablers and helpers to Gosling and Page. Page is a typically irredeemable evil CIA suit, slick and soulless and one-dimensional to a fault. Acclaimed Indian actor, apologies for saying his name wrong, Dahanishu, shows up as a freelance mercenary hired by Hansen, but despite his charisma and action chops, his role is mostly super, superfluous. Evans is the only real wild card in what is clearly his biggest attempt yet to play an anti-Captain America. Evans cackles and smirks manically at every turn. You can practically see him forcing himself not to twirl his porn star mustache, which should get its own star billing. He's pretty much acting in his own movie, fast with the jokes, even as he's yanking someone's fingernails out during one torture scene. But his Hansen is ultimately cartoonish, undercutting any real dread he might generate. That's really the final analysis on the gray man. There's little generation of dread, tension, suspense, emotion, humor, or even engagement. The movie's beats are so familiar, the characters so cookie cutter, the action sequences and fights so by the number that the movie undercuts itself. Even the around-the-world settings don't make much of an impact because the movie flies in and out of them so fast. Seriously, this is one of those movies where everyone can get anywhere in the world in five minutes. The Russos clearly know how to put a huge film together and just as clearly hope to start a new franchise with The Gray Man. But aside from its scope, a few striking action moments, and the overall quality of the cast, this is like a battle world of spy thrillers with pieces of it cut and pasted from other properties. 007 was taken, Gosling's six quips at one point when asked about its numerical designation. It's the movie idea of self-awareness, but even at its worst, James Bond is an infinitely more interesting, fun, and colorful secret agent to watch. So I'm going to leave a rating would be, I'm going to say three out of five. And right now you can actually catch The Gray Man either on Netflix or in theaters. But another thing I'd have to highlight about this movie is the question of whether people don't like it because it's such a big blockbuster in theaters when it's really, it was filmed for Netflix. So, you know, Netflix, all their original content and whatnot, you don't expect it to be that great of a movie. Now, if it was strictly just uh, put in theaters and and uh, film for theaters, then I might expect a little more. 
but this was just like your average Netflix movie. But hey, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. What did you think about The Great Man? I thought it was a decent film for Chris Evans to get back to acting after his Captain America days. But let us know in the comments section below. And as always, if you want to support the show, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash cinema gold. Your support helps the channel grow, upgrade our equipment, bring in new hosts, pay them, and hopefully take this show on the road. We don't really love to um, live stream from Comic-Con, D23, Star Wars Celebration, plenty of places. And your support can help make that happen. Of course, if you want to be featured on a, another episode of the Cinema Gold Show, you can send us a voicemail. 682-305-0483. Give us your thoughts on the topics we covered or let us know on let us know a topic we should cover. Is there something we missed, something we got wrong? Let us know. And as always, you can find us on Twitter at Cinema Gold Show and on Facebook. And as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. We will see you next.